Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Melissa and today we're doing a lucky bag number 11. So I have one more after this. I had thought about combining them together and when I did look at the contents I just felt like no, it would take me too long to try all those products and put them into one video. So here we are. For those of you who aren't familiar with this series, it's a series I started last year where I took 12 empty Sephora bags and filled them with like a full face of makeup of products that I wasn't sure I wanted to keep in my collection anymore or that I needed to re-familiarize myself with and had slowly worked through them through most of the year and then it's carried over into this year. We'll just leave it at that. So what I'm gonna do is go through each product, what I'm gonna keep, what I'm not gonna keep. So uh, this is kind of like a declutter. And I have a very fussy contact lens over here. So hopefully, Hopefully I'll be able to read everything because that's my reading lens, so we'll see. So the first item is this wrinkle reducing sheet mask from Mask Bar. And uh, it feels like it's still good. I'm going to put it in the bathroom and get after it in the next day or so. Or this upcoming week. We'll see. So I'm definitely going to keep this and use it. I've been trying all the little masks and skincare products that have been in these bags. I've been trying to work on them with varying degrees of success. The next item is a primer. This is Mirabella Prime for face and eyes. I didn't realize it was for eyes. I just used it on my face. Honestly, I'm not going to keep this. This is... I did use it on my face today. It's like a clear, can you see that silicone like gel? I don't love that kind of primer. So I'm not gonna keep it. I'm pretty sure someone got it in like some kind of subscription box and passed it along to me. You don't want it so you give me your cast offs, really. So I'm just gonna discard that. That's going away. That went a lot farther than I thought. Next, I have two different face products. This is from MAC, and it is their Studio Fix Fluid NW18. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is too dark for me now. Yeah, this is really too dark for me. Ever since I started using Curology, I feel like my skin color and tone has changed, and like 99% of the f foundations that I had in my collection are really like way too dark. So I am not going to keep this. This is not a match for me. I feel like it's really very yellowy, orangey, just way too dark. But I am going to pull this pump out because I think these pumps work on other foundations. So I am going to hold on to the pump, but I'm getting rid of the foundation. And I clearly no, I've had that a long, long time. The other thing I had in there that's like a face product is this one from IT Cosmetics. So this is their CC eye cream that has an SPF of 50 and in the shade Fair. And I'm actually wearing this like places where I need a little coverage, like around my nose, a little spot here because I got lazy with my skincare. Um, you know, just kind of the center of my face and just a, not up high under my eyes, just pretty low under my eyes. And uh, the color is pretty good. I top it with a powder foundation to kind of set it and blend it in with the rest of the skin. One of the things I love best about this is this like little cooling tip. I love when products come with this little tip. What is this tip made of? That it always feels it feels cool all the time. I love it, but you know, this isn't skincare that you're gonna be like rubbing it in. So while I love the tip, its usefulness is minimal in something like this. But I think I'm gonna keep this and see if I can work through this a little more because I feel like the color is pretty good. So this is going in 
Pickeep pile. This is the Dr. Jart Black Label Detox BB Beauty Balm. Has an SPF of 25. I I need to go online and check which um which of their BB creams or beauty bombs they are still manufacturing or that Sephora is still carrying. I like this. I'm going to include a clip where I'm wearing it. Um, I feel like the color is pretty good. So I'll want to use this up. In general, I've been a really big fan of the Dr. Jart BB creams. All right, there was one blush in this bag and it is the Revlon Cream Blush in the shade Smitten. It just looks like this. Here's the color. Again, I'm wearing it in this clip. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on this. It's just there's something weird about it. Um, I don't know whether it's the color that I don't care for. I mean, it's still in pretty good shape here. Um, but I never reach for it. I have a couple of other cream blushes that I like so much better than this. So um, this is also going to go bye bye I think I'll do this one next. So there was a loose powder in there from NYX, the NYX Color Correcting Powder in Lavender. It looks like this. And... It's an interesting um, shade. It's very uh, subtle, and I am wearing it. To, I've worn. I think I have it in both clips. This one and the other one. I wore it. And lavender is like a brightener, so it helps brighten your complexion a little bit. And I really enjoy this powder. You know, I'm going to use it up. I think those kind of color correcting powders do work. I like them better than like the cream correctors that you put like under your foundation. That's just a little too heavy for me. So uh, this is great and I'm going to keep it. Then I have another two other like cheek products. And the first one is from Lorac. It's their tantalizer highlighter and matte bronze duo. It's in this enormous compact like this. And there. I did wear this one day. I'm not a huge bronze lover, bronzer lover. And this highlighter is kind of dark. Um, I'm going to pass on this. I have, you know, I don't wear bronzer enough to really keep it, but I have other bronzers I like a lot better when I'm going to go ahead and do a bronzer. So uh, I would toss this, but. I'm afraid I don't want it to shatter all over my rug. The other one I have is from Laura Mercier, and it's the Candlelight Mineral Illuminating Powder. And it's a loose powder. This is like, I think it's a deluxe sample. I'm not really sure where I got it. I know I didn't like buy it per se, but it has, it also is, well, it's very shiny, but it looks kind of dark in here. It's right here. I am not keeping this. I have other highlighters that I like way, way better. And um, it's very messy. I, like a loose highlighter is very messy. Like I feel like I have it all over. So that's also gone. Bye bye. All right, just to jump around a little bit, I did have a brand new mascara in there that I haven't opened yet. I do still want to try this, but honest to God, I just opened a brand new mascara. And I'm not wearing that much mascara these days, because you know what? So I'm just going to hold this. I'm going to hold it, I'm going to keep it, and I will open it and use it at the appropriate time. All right, I have a couple of single eyeshadows. So this one is from Kat Von D. It's the Metal Crush eyeshadow in the shade Synergy, which is a really beautiful bronzy brown. Can you see that? It's quite dark and intense. It does have a little bit of an orangey undertone. It's just okay on me. But here's the, here's the deal. 
I have the matte metal, the big matte metal palette, and this shade is in there. I don't want to keep both. I rarely reach for little singles anyway, and so I'm going to let this one go. So next is another color pop. This is the Super Shock Shadow in Crimper. It's a very pretty, like, beige shade. Hard as a rock. I knew that. I didn't even open this before filming because I knew I wouldn't be keeping it. The deal with these, they're great, but they dry out very fast. So these aren't things that you're going to keep in your collection very long. The upside is they're not very expensive. They're very pretty, but they just dry up super fast. The next eyeshadow single is this L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow in Iced Latte. So remember these? They were all the rage for a while. And I actually remember why I bought this. And they had this little stopper here. And here is this pretty beigey, very bright eyeshadow. And so I remember why I bought this. I started to tell you. This was something YouTube make me made me buy this. I don't remember who it was because it was really way too long ago. And she's like... This is the most versatile eyeshadow ever. You can wear it on your eyes. You can use it as a highlighter. You know, she had like three or four different ways you could use this little eyeshadow. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Except for it looks awful on my eyes. It's way too pale. My eyes are way too crinkly. And I didn't love it as a highlighter either. I have, it's like, no. So... I don't know why I kept it all this time other than I paid money for it. But does anybody still have these in their collection? What colors? There was a couple of colors that I really thought were great. Let me see here. Oh, this one. This is Bronze Taupe. I love this one. Oh, so pretty. I'm going to put it next to that Kat Von D one and you can see how warm the Kat Von D one is compared to this uh, L'Oreal one. I need to pull this out and use it because I really like it. Bye-bye. That was the ice latte. So now we're getting down to, I had two eyeshadow palettes in there. So the one I'm wearing today is the Bare Minerals Ready Eyeshadow 8.0, which means there's eight eyeshadows in there. And this is the Power Neutrals in it came in this very sleek little compact. I loved the packaging. And this is a great range of neutrals. But honestly, I never reach for this. So I am wearing it today. Did it make a pretty look? Yes. Do I have a similar eyeshadow layout in other palettes that I reach for more often? Yes. So, you know, I'm not going to keep this. All right, this next one is from Buxom, and it is Dolly's Wild Side Eyeshadow Palette. And it has six shadows in it. It did come preloaded, but I think it was part of that collection where you could pull it out and you could fill your compact with shadows that you liked. But I chose to just do one that was preloaded and I really really liked this and I'm definitely keeping it I should wear this a whole lot more and in this clip you can see um, I am wearing it in in this clip so this they're both kind of like neutrals but this top one really appeals to me way more than this bottom one it's just personal preference there's nothing wrong with either one of them but I really love, really enjoyed using this again. And I am a fan of the Bare Minerals Eyeshadow Formula, but this just doesn't do it for me. Holy moly, we are down just to lip products. So let's talk about what I'm wearing. I am wearing a Pat McGrath lipstick, and it's Sorry Not Sorry, which... I like. It's, kind of, it's a little bright, but I like it. It's wearable. Um, you know, here's the deal. 
these are so beautiful. I, I love the packaging on, on these. And I did buy three, and I was kind of disappointed in a lot of the colors. So if I remember correctly, I think this might be one of the colors that I liked the best. I also used it as a blush today because I did not want to use that kind of icky Barbie doll pink again. So uh, I did use a little dab of this and used it as a blush today. So for now, I'm going to keep it because... I am going to do like an overhaul of all my lipsticks that are that kind of made the first cut and I'll be filming that as well. The next lipstick is from Pixie and it's their Shea Butter Lip Balm in the shade Natural Rose and I really quite like this so I'm definitely keeping it. This might end up down in the kitchen when I use up some of my other kitchen lipsticks but it's just a really pretty medium tone lipstick that's not too dark and it's very moisturizing. I like that. So I am going to try on these last two lipsticks. The first one is from Kat Von D and it is Lolita which was a personal favorite. It's one of their long wearing lipsticks and then the other one is from Wet n Wild, their Mega Last Liquid Cat Suit in Rebel Rose. So this is the Wet n Wild Rebel Rose. I think it's pretty. What do you all think? So I think it's pretty, I, I have to say, I'm really, really particular about lipsticks and like their undertones. This is a slightly warmer undertone. I have to tell you, usually when a lipstick has the word rose in its name, I'm very drawn to it because I think it looks really pretty, but it never really looks that great on. For some reason, I don't know what it is about rosy tone lipsticks and I'm not really digging these like long wearing lipsticks anymore so I'm gonna discard this this other one it smells really funky and so I really didn't even want to put it on my um, lips but this was a personal favorite it's the um, Kat Von D Lolita and so yeah Really loved that. Wore, I wore that quite a bit. So that Kat Von D I'm going to discard, but I'm just going to go ahead and do swatches of all these. So here we go. This is the Pixie Lip Balm. This next one is the Pat McGrath. Uh, this second from the top is what I'm wearing, and that's the Kat Von D Lolita. So Lolita's going goodbye. The uh, Wet and Wild liquid cat suit is going as well. We're down to the last one. I'm going to get to that one really quickly so I can be done with this declutter series and do a quick wrap up when I'm all done. Because yes, I've been saving all that makeup in a separate bin for a wrap up video. Because why not? <laughs> I upload videos every Saturday morning and I'll include a link to last week's video right up here and let YouTube make a recommended video for you to watch over here. Thank you so much and I'll see you real soon. Bye!